Hi everyone, welcome to the Thursday edition of Source 16 News. I'm Eddie Owen. Thanks for joining us. A Todd County woman seriously injured in a bicycle versus vehicle wreck last month has died from her injuries. Kentucky State Police reported today that 51-year-old Donna Gregory of Guthrie died at Vanderbilt Medical Center in Nashville two weeks ago. On April 23rd, police reported that Gregory was riding a bicycle north on Kentucky Street in Guthrie when she failed to stop for oncoming, oncoming traffic at the intersection of East Park Street and was hit by a vehicle driven by 27-year-old Elizabeth Mallory of Dunmore. Gregory was transported from the scene to Gateway Medical Center in Clarksville, later transferred to Vanderbilt Medical Center where she died three days later on April 26th. A Clarksville police officer has been fired from his position following a Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. According to Clarksville Police today, 39-year-old Stephen Day was terminated from his job April 27th after an internal investigation revealed he violated departmental policies in reference to truthfulness and conduct unbecoming to an officer. The investigation was then referred to the district attorney's office and was investigated by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, which did not file any criminal charges against Day. The release of his termination was reportedly delayed until the appeal process was completed. A Hopkinsville organization is asking for the public's help in remodeling a Fort Campbell couple's home. Here's Marie Fainter with more on this story. A Fort Campbell couple was living the American dream until their house was completely destroyed by water and mold. Oh my gosh, uh, I have asthma. Let me just start by saying that. And I had a difficult time breathing. There was a little bit too much moisture and of course the utility was off. So it's extremely warm. But it looks like someone came through. If you've seen some of the pictures of folks that have gone through some of our recent weather phenomena, some of the, the disasters, that's what it looks like in that house. According to Russell, water pipes burst inside the Couples Bell Station Road residence after the utilities were accidentally turned off while the couple was deployed in Afghanistan. The water came from above, so it soaked everything down below. All the drywall had to be removed because it was wet for so long during the entire winter that there was actually a bit of mold starting to, to develop. Um, it is just, um, I don't know, it, it makes me sad to think that even if they were able to, to come up with the money to fix it, that they wouldn't have beds for their children to sleep on, that the, the crib that the 10 month old laid in is destroyed. It's just, it's not, it's not a pretty picture. A relative of the couple even wrote to President Obama for help, who then forwarded the couple's information to the Housing and Urban Development and the Aaron McNeil House. And I think that all of us would, would want to know that if something like this happened, that people would come to our aid and, and we have that opportunity to do that for the Honeycutt family. Russell is now asking for the public's assistance to help rebuild the Honeycutt's dream home. These soldiers have sacrificed and we want to show them that this community, as it always has been supportive of, of uh, Fort Campbell, is going to be there for them. That we're going to make sure that when they get off of that plane in August and they think that they're going to be going to temporary housing, we would love for them to be able to drive up to their home. And this is the first home they've ever owned. If you would like to donate your time or money to help out this effort, contact the Aaron McNeil House at 270-886-9734. Marie Fainter, Source 16 News. Meanwhile, 24 Fort Campbell soldiers assigned to the 3rd Platoon, 187th Regiment, grabbed their hammers and volunteered their time to help build a Nashville Habitat for Humanity home. The platoon reportedly wanted to volunteer their time to show their appreciation to residents who supported them during their recent deployment. Well, efforts are underway to repair a major landslide along Kentucky 93 in Lyon County. Transportation cabinet officials say it's the largest landslide in Kentucky's 12 westernmost counties in recent memory. Spokesman Keith Todd said the damage is so severe the project will be more about rebuilding the road rather than repairing it. Due to the recent near record flooding event across the region, Todd says Kentucky 93 has dropped as much as 10 feet along about a 1500 foot section of the road between the eight and nine mile marker south of Eddyville near the Eddy Creek area. Early estimates indicate the cost of the repair will be about $600,000 and take about four to six weeks or more depending upon weather conditions. 
As we reported last night at 10, the Christian County Board of Education is working to keep area schools safe for students and faculty by adding school resource officers next year. In a special call meeting last night, the board approved the contract between the Hopkinsville Police Department and Christian County Sheriff's Office. Under the contract, the Christian County Sheriff's Office is required to provide two deputies at the area high schools and a deputy for the alternative school. In addition, the Hopkinsville Police Department will be required to staff three officers officers at area middle schools, along with one officer assigned to each elementary school. I've never had any, either one of them say, no, we're not going to do that, or no, that's not going to I mean, you know, they say, hey, if I, if I can help, that's what I want to do. So I'm sure if the chief, uh, if we have, if we want to do a regular schedule, he'll work with us to do that, the sheriff will do that. I mean, I, I can't say enough about how the, 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 both departments have been uh, excellent to, for us to work with. In other action, the school board also approved to keep its communications and community education director position, which is currently held by Reagan Honeycutt. Superintendent Brady Link says Honeycutt's position is very important to the school district. It's more community to y'all, it's more it's community right. education than it is yes. PR. Right. I mean, it, it's that. a lot more involvement with, uh, you know, uh, the things that, that, that we're doing in the school uh, with the involvement in the community. Yeah. This Partners in Ed program, which is which has been a joint effort between the school and, and the chamber. Yeah. I'm telling you, Ms. Ms. Honeycutt spent a lot, of, a lot of time on that particular program, getting it off the ground. So there's a lot of community ed issues, and I think that's, for me, the most important part of this job is the community education part, because we need our community to be successful, and I think we have, for the most part, you're never gonna get but we have more people now, we have companies in all over our uh, county that are working with our school. Honeycutt recently announced she was resigning from the position. Her last day of employment with the school district was today. Police have arrested two local men in connection with a burglary at an elementary school in Christian County. According to Hopkinsville Police, 20-year-old Christopher Travis of Katie's and 21-year-old Jonathan Ramsour of Hopkinsville were taken into custody around 3.30 at a home in the 3900 block of Tanglewood Drive. Police were dispatched to Holiday Park Elementary School Wednesday morning in reference to a burglary and found over $650 worth of radios, photographic equipment, computer hardware, and walkie-talkies had been stolen. School staff reportedly overheard the two burglars using the radios and advised police, which led detectives to a residence on Tanglewood Drive, where they found the two men with the walkie-talkies. Police say both men admitted to the burglary. Travis and Ramsour were charged with third-degree burglary and lodged in the Christian County Jail. Police are asking for the public's help regarding a recent burglary at a pharmacy in Hopkins County. The Hopkins County Sheriff's Department reported today that on May 4th, deputies responded to an alarm at the Nortonville Pharmacy on Greenville Road. Upon arrival, police discovered that someone entered the building and stole various items from the pharmacy. Now, if you have any information about the burglary at the Nortonville Pharmacy, pharmacy contact Deputy Jonathan Barnes or Detective Matt Sanderson at 270-821-5661. State officials announced today that Kentucky's 2010 tourism economic impact figure was up 4.8 percent from 2009. Governor Steve Bashir and Tourism, Arts and Heritage Secretary Marchetta Sparrow said, says the economic impact in Kentucky was $11.3 billion in 2010. Bashir says thanks to events like the World Equestrian Games and the many other excellent tourism attractions we have in Kentucky, our state is benefiting with jobs, wages and tax revenue. The annual survey also showed that tourism was responsible for creating over 2,600 more jobs from the previous year, which generated more than $2.5 billion in wages for Kentucky workers. That's an increase of $118 million from 2009. The report was produced by Surtec Incorporated of for sales. For more details about the economic impact study, visit KentuckyTourism.com forward slash industry and click on research. Hopkinsville officials will be unveiling a new Optimist Club classroom building tomorrow afternoon. The Penny Ryle RC&D Council is partnering up with the Jeffers Bend Steering Committee and former members to officially dedicate the new classroom, which will be located at Jeffers Bend. Some of the guest speakers for the event 
will be in will include Hopkinsville Mayor Dan Kemp, Christian County Judge Executive Steve Tribble, Christian County Public School Superintendent Brady Link, University Heights Academy Headmaster Pamela Nunn, St. Peter and Paul Principal Sarah Kranz, and Heritage Christian Academy Headmaster Linda Garris. Officials say about 100 Hopkinsville High School students will also attend the 1 p.m. event. Two Murray State University students are among 25 students across the Commonwealth who were awarded scholarships by the Kentucky Law Enforcement Memorial Foundation. Murray State University students Matthew Bailey of Hardensburg and Sabrina Clapp of Mayfield were each awarded Gerald F. Healy scholarships for the fall 2011 semester. Healy, the owner of 14 McDonald's franchises in, the, in Central Kentucky, was a founding member of the KLEMF organization and served on the board of directors until his death in January 2009. A total of $25,000 in scholarships were awarded to Kentucky law enforcement officers dependents at 10 Kentucky colleges and universities.